Welcome, I'm Rob Fazio. I'm the CEO of SnobbyToSimple.com. We specialize in connecting you to the finer things in life. One thing we're very passionate about is learning about different experiences in life, whether it be tasting wine or smoking cigars or using different humidors or different aspects of life that are often associated with being very sophisticated. And we try to make your experience them as simple as possible. These aspects of life that should be enjoyable are oftentimes intimidating, and we want to take that intimidation away from them and be your bridge from snobby to simple. Our first simple strategy that we're going to talk to you about is this idea of wine tasting. Now oftentimes when people learn about wine or they taste wine, they become afraid of what's going on because people make it seem like it's such a complicated process and it's so difficult to understand. It's actually not, and we're going to show you how it can be something that's simple and quite enjoyable. Um, there is a quote-unquote right way to taste the wine. I'll be absolutely honest with you, I am a wine rookie, but I really enjoy learning about it. So as I go through my journey and learning about wine, I'm going to teach you as much as you can. And one thing I learned recently was the proper way to taste the wine. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through that. Uh, what I'm going to start out with is uh, just a, a wine. Um, I typically buy wines that are in anywhere from the $12 to $18 range, uh, unless one of my friends is paying, and then I go up to about $25. Uh, but I keep my wines at a reasonable rate because I like to enjoy them. I like a, a wine that I can have a glass of every evening. Um, your experience with wine is going to be very different than everyone else's. I prefer reds, um, and I have reds with with most wheels, with most meals. Um, even if I'm having something like fish, uh, I'll also drink red wines because I really enjoy it. And there is something to be said as you develop your taste and experience with wine. The more experience you have, and the more knowledge you have, you can learn to complement what wine you're drinking with what you're tasting. Um, but I haven't gotten there yet. As I get there, I'll teach that to you as well. Uh, so uh, I have a, uh, a California Cabernet here um, from the, the Central Coast. This is, uh, as I said, about a $15 wine. And um, what the type of wine I'm drinking isn't important, but how I'm going to go about tasting it is a little more important if you want to learn one of the correct ways to do that. And we developed a, the four S's of, of wine tasting. And it's, it's quite simple as everything else that we try to do. Um, so I'm just going to pour a little bit of, of red wine here, um, and those bubbles you get in there are great because that, what we call, aerates the wine or lets some air or oxygen into it, and um, it's, people say they like their wine to breathe, or you've got to wake it up a little bit. Um, so you don't want to fill it up to the, the rim. You'll notice if you're at a restaurant and someone gives you a little bit of wine, uh, they won't fill it up. They'll want you to taste it first, and this is the process you can use. To, to taste wine. Um, even when you're not at a restaurant and you want to taste a different wine, this is the way to get the most out of that experience. Uh, so th the first thing that you want to do is just take notice of the color. So the first S is C. So you just want to see the wine. What color is it? And the best way to do that is tilt your glass um, and then put it down on a white surface. I quite simply have a paper towel here. You can use a white placemat, you can use a white piece of paper, anything that has a, a nice white color just so you can get the, the best uh, experience as far as what you see. So, okay, what do you see there? Is it a deep red? Is it a light red? Does it get more pink towards the end? This just gives you some descriptors or, or characteristics of the wine. Um, so you want to you wanna see the wine. Um, now, I should say, as I go through this process, I realize that it's not always that easy to remember all the S's. So what we did was we created just a little cheat sheet here for you. Uh, it has a front and a back, uh, a card that has the four S's on them. So as you're going through them, you could take notes and really begin to explore what you prefer as far as wines. So the first S being C. Uh, the next S would be the swirl. And this is where people kind of get a little pretentious, right? And kind of how they swirl and the wrist action and, and what they do. I just move the wine around, right? Um, so you could do that. You could also place it on the table, give a little swirl there. Uh, this actually isn't just so you look cool. 
Uh, this actually allows you to wake up the wine because it's in a bottle for so long. In this case, since uh, it's a 2005, um, it, it helps it interact with the glass, with the air, um, and more of the smells, and it releases the, what they would say, the bouquet of the wine, which just means what, it's, what it smells like. Which brings us to our next, next S, which is smell. So we had C, you're noticing the color, then we had swirl, right, you're just moving it around. Uh, then we have smell. Now I realize that looks quite awkward and quite funny, uh, but you really do want to get your schnoz in there and take a sniff of the wine. Uh, you want to just smell what the wine is like. And what do you smell there? It takes years and years of practice to actually understand what you're, you're smelling there. Um, you know, people say they smell things ranging from black cherries to uh, pieces of earth or mushrooms or plants or apple or spices, pepper, all different types of smell. The, the great thing about this is there are no wrong answers. So whatever you smell uh, is actually accurate. Uh, smelling the wine isn't just a way to get a sense of what it smells like. It actually makes the taste of the wine better um, and, and connects you to that experience. Uh, so then we have our fourth S, which is taking a sip. So I'll go over them again. We have, you know, we have C, seeing the wine, swirl, smell, and then we're about to take a sip. It's my favorite part there, the sip and the slurp. The, the sip is where you actually take in some of the wine and you begin to taste it and you write down whatever you taste there. Is it acidic? Uh, is it bitter? What does it taste like to you? Now on our website we have a number of different descriptors and we set it up where it's the snobby version and then where it's the simple version. So for example, on the sip People might say, on the attack, or on the tongue, okay, it's light on the tongue, um, which would mean that on the tip of your tongue, when you first taste it, what it tastes like. So there's the attack, there's the mid palate, and there's the finish. Quite simply, it's the beginning, middle, and end. That's all you really need to know for now. What does it taste like when initially you hit your tongue? What does it taste like as you're sipping and slurping? and what does it taste like when it goes down your throat. Uh, now you'll notice when I take a sip, I do that slurp. That slurp is also to bring oxygen in to interact with the wine so you get a better taste and better experience of the wine. Uh, it's great for people who actually drink like that on a daily basis. Um, you don't have to be embarrassed about that anymore. Uh, it's actually the way you go about tasting. Now you'll notice I'm actually choosing to uh, sip the wine and swallow it and drink it. Um, that's my preferred way to do it. Uh, you'll see if you ever go to a wine tasting that they'll provide you with a receptacle so you can actually spit out the wine um, so you don't get too drunk and you can taste different wines. When you're tasting wines, you always want to go from the lighter wine to the darker or deeper or more full body wine. Um, so we'll get into different types of wines. Uh, I'll make some recommendations for wines later on as we go on. But the first simple strategy we wanted to teach you was quite simply the tasting of the wine and the proper way to do that. And so once again, it's seeing the wine, swirling the wine, and then also sipping and slurping the wine. Uh, I forgot the smell. See, you don't have to be perfect with this. The whole bottom line is enjoy yourself. Have fun with it, make it your own experience, and you should be enjoying your experience while you're tasting your wine. We hope you see you again soon at snobbytosimple.com. Thank you.